Now, the websites of banks, airlines, even the Hong Kong Stock Exchange were knocked offline by a major internet outage this morning. The problem was traced to a content delivery system run by Akane Technologies. The second time in just 10 days that a delivery system has failed. Some of the companies affected by this latest glitch include Southwestern, uh, Southwest Airlines, who said the pause did impact, did not impact, pardon me, flight operations. Also, United Airlines and Virgin Australia. The outage is Commonwealth Bank, Bank of Australia, Westpac Bank, the Australia and New Zealand Banking Group. Also, as we mentioned, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange and Frontier Airlines. Barry Biffle is a CEO of Frontier Airlines. He joins me now from Denver, Colorado. Uh, Barry, thank you very much for joining us. Let's start, if, if you don't mind, with, uh, with this global outage. Uh, you know, there is no indication this is a hacking event, but how much disruption did it cause? Give us a sense of, of the picture. Yeah, so it, it didn't impact us uh, materially at all. In fact, we, we saw a little bit of disturbance last night uh, overnight, but uh, t today we've seen no, no changes. And in fact, uh, bookings continue to surge just to do, due to all the demand. Yeah, it does, though, come, uh, Barry, after many of the world's top websites, including CNN, may I add, went offline briefly due to a problem with the software, if you remember, called Fastly. How worried are you about the recurrence of these disruptions? And are you changing at all the way your business operates? We're, we're not changing the way we're operating, but obviously we, we see these things happen and we want yeah. to make sure that we take care of our customers and our operations. So we're evaluating our systems and any vulnerabilities that could be out there. But uh, you know, we're not making any changes as a result. Barry, let's talk bookings and the return to some sense of normalcy. How is it looking now that the U.S. is opening up and more people are vaccinated? Yeah, so look, it's, it's looking better every week. I mean, since pretty much since February, I mean, Every week, as more people got vaccinated and more people feel more and more confident, uh, they're leaving their homes, they're going out to travel. And, you know, we've, we've now, since Memorial Day, the industry's in the kind of the 80% uh, load factors. And with the continued uh, improvements in, in bookings, I expect we'll see 90% load factors in, in, in Fourth of July ho holiday week. So I think it's a, it's a great time to travel and everyone's excited to travel again. And it's great to get an optimistic view as well, given the climate we've been in. You have, though, been enticing people to take to the skies with very low fares. Yet, from what I gather, you still expect to be prof profitable in the second half. How, do you, how are you going to achieve this? Well, we achieve it by having, having really low costs and not just low X fuel, but l low total costs. And by having the lowest cost, uh, we're able to, to make money with low fares. And so... So we, uh, we have some great fares out there for people, but uh, I think my advice to everyone is if you see something that uh, you want to buy, you better buy it because it's not going to matter what the price is soon. I think uh, for the most peak flights, they're going to be sold out pretty soon for summer. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Where are you in terms of business travelers? Are you seeing a pickup here? Do you think we'll ever see the numbers we had pre-pandemic levels? Yeah, so we're, we're not really in the business travel segment uh, per se. Yeah. Um, you know, American Airlines, United Airlines, those guys do a great job with corporate travel, and it's just not really our business. We, we carry a small percentage, less than 5% in normal times. We've seen a modest uptick, uh, but uh, it's, it's not that material yet. But I do expect, uh, just like myself, I'm in the office today, and, it's, and uh, mm. we've, we've completely reopened our business. And I know most businesses across America should be open by Labor Day. And once everybody's, I've joked, you know, would you rather be in a Cube or in the Marriott? And I believe that people are going to be back on the road traveling just as soon as they're back in their office. Yeah, people really are really keen to travel and get up there and start traveling again. Now, now let me ask you this, Barry. A couple of days ago, you would have known the U.S. and, uh, and the EU agreed to end their 17-year dispute over commercial aircraft subsidies for Airbus and Boeing. You have an Airbus fleet. Give me a sense of what this breakthrough means to you. Well, I, I think it's exciting for our friends at Airbus, but I think it's good for Boeing, too. I mean, it's, it's just not good for, for the aviation community to have these kinds of things hanging out there. And so I think it's great that we can move forward with Europe and, and the United States. Barry Biffle, the CEO of Frontier Airlines, I wish you all the best. Thanks very much, Barry. Thanks for having us on.